How many more of my friends and family have to die to satiate nature's hunger? As far as I know, my home stood here for more than 100 years, and many more than I have come and gone like a passing breeze. We give everything we have for the sake of life, and yet we get nothing in return. We wither, we die, we get replaced. What dreadful fate has befallen my kind? Nature always begins the same things again. The years, the days, the hours, in like manner, spaces and numbers follow each other from beginning to end. This has made a kind of infinity and eternity. This is what the others keep preaching. I believe they just repeat this to find some comfort in our short and hopeless lives, like cowardly turtles hiding in their shells. We end. There is no infinity. There is no afterlife. We begin, and the clock starts ticking. You seem burdened, Mesquite, a strange voice says. Is there something troubling you? Nothing you would understand, Anaguahita, I exclaim. You are all so beautiful and eternal. Fate's radiant and bright light has smiled upon you and ignored the rest of us. How could anyone be joyous in our situation? What you lack is not eternity, Mesquite, but perspective and appreciation, Anaguahita said with a forceful tone. My people may be eternal, but it is as much a curse as your perception of death. We do not age, but we do not stop working. Winters and summers pass, but we do not receive a moment's rest. We are fatigued and trapped in our everlasting prison that you call a home. Our beauty, however great, is only matched by our sorrow. I could not comprehend the words of Anaguahita. All my life, I had seen death as this monstrous entity, silently creeping in our backs like a jungle cat waiting to strike. The stench of death itself wafted all around me as more and more of the ones I loved were falling, their bodies too weak to scream. And I knew I was soon to follow. This could not be a gift. Who would wish this upon anyone? You are a monster, Anaquahita, I shouted in a fit of fear and rage. How could you envy this? Look at my people. Look at how much we suffer each year. We live only to see each other die. What life is this? If only we could be like you, beautiful and everlasting. You say that you work for eternity, but all we know in our short lives is work. We work just as hard as you, and yet we do not have any beauty. We do not have any grace. All we have is each other. And even that goes away with the impending march of time. There is no beauty in death, only despair. Discontented with your present state, for reasons which threaten your unfortunate descendants with still greater discontent, you will perhaps wish it were in your power to go back, and this feeling should be a panegyric on your first ancestors, a criticism of your contemporaries, and a terror to the unfortunates who will come after you. Anakwehita said in a stern but understanding manner. You cannot halt time, and you cannot halt existence. All you can do is live with the choices you've made and try to find it within yourself to forgive those around you and come to peace with your existence as I have. Despite being part of a larger being and being a part of life itself, my people cannot die. 
We are frozen in time like statues, watching the world go on without us. Your life is too short to be filled with hatred and malice. This is what I was attempting to convey to you, Mesquite. Because of your short life, your choices and loved ones matter so much more to you. You must live each moment like it was your last. Nature has given you the gift, not of beauty, but of meaning. Which, in itself, is even more beautiful. You have been given life. As Anakoyita said this, his eyes started to swell with tears, and his body was shaking as he looked around his home, and then at mine. He didn't look at the dead with disgust. He looked at them with love and longing, like how I imagined the sun would look down upon my people and I, giving us energy. It was then that I finally understood. My whole world view had changed. Never until these last few days had I understood the meaning of existence. Death was not nature's unstoppable hand of destruction. It was a chance and an opportunity. An opportunity to make a difference in other people's lives and make sure that our descendants remember us for our sacrifice. I finally understood the words of my people. The strength of our virtue must not be measured by eternity or beauty, but by our ordinary lives. I hurried to everyone I had ever wronged and made amends with them. I turned to the ones I loved and embraced them for the final time. And as I saw that my time was at hand, I stood silently, looking at the sunset. I had never appreciated just how beautiful it looked. As it fell beneath the horizon and grew further and further away, I felt the winds of change against my back, carrying me to my final destination until everything faded. It was as if fate was finally smiling down on me.